you get involved? You got involved in planning. Why do we do what you do? Um, George J. Gomez, and I work with the uh, Environmental Health Coalition. Um, and uh, I, I do, I actually, I'm one of those, you know, as you were talking today about the uh, just planning overall, all the documents that she was referring to, they're in my trunk, literally. I have, like, I have the general plan update, uh, the actual document. Um, I also have the Bunker Logan Community Plan update, the actual plan, the environmental report. So I have everything on my trunk. Um, this is how much I love planning. And I love planning because, uh, and the reason that I do this work is because um, I, I, I used to live in Bunker Logan, that's the community that I was born in. And uh, as, as I was growing up, I, I saw how the city was intentionally pushing a lot of polluters into the community to remove the residents. Um, so that was my, that's the story that really got me very motivated to, to go do my education and do all of that and then come back and really do the work that I do, which is what I get to do now as part of our mental health coalition. Um, I now moved to City Heights and I'm trying to be more involved with it, but uh, the, the reason that I do this is because I come from these communities and I've, I've lived the impacts and, uh, and, and planning is a good thing. Uh, it's also a dangerous thing, so it's really important to become involved because it can lead to negative things if, if the voices of the community are not there. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank Rib for the invitation and to uh, CPI and the Alliance for hosting this. I think this is fantastic. The turnout is really encouraging. I'd like to see a lot of new faces and new energy in the planning process. Uh, my name is Joe McGowan, and I guess my title for this evening is Chair of the Community Planners Committee. Uh, I do live in La Jolla, in the Bird Rock neighborhood, and I sit on the La Jolla Community Planning Group, and I've done that, I guess this is about year number seven. And I was the appointee to the Community Planners Committee, uh, and they were nice enough to elect me as chair in my second year. Uh, in terms of how I got involved, I um, I'm a native of San Diego. Uh, I actually spent the first five years of my life in an apartment building in what is now Chicago Park, uh, and have lived in several neighborhoods as my parents moved around. Uh, my background is as a registered civil engineer, uh, so I have a fascination and love with infrastructure, uh, and then got involved in land development, and that's what my day job is, although I tend to forget that at times, uh, because a lot of meetings, as you know, are during the day, you're really committed, you have to go to those meetings and participate. Uh, I really got involved about 10 years ago because I saw the need for people that were more concerned about the process and how to have good conversations within a community rather than push a particular agenda. Uh, I saw it as a waste of people's time when they spent more time about arguing, what are we supposed to be talking about? I didn't hear about this meeting. Uh, or I didn't get good information and they're arguing about the information. I remember a phone call where a neighbor said, my gosh, you can build a 1,400-unit condo project down the street. That's big, way too big. And I thought, it can't be that big. And I contacted the city and sure enough, it was only 140 units. <laughs> but that person was wasting time and energy worried about this big project. And so I got involved simply for that process. And I'm one of those crazy people that loves process I love bureaucracy. Um, I love getting this city together. Um, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I, that's not what I try to champion. And I believe in local voices and local participation. Um, I'll challenge anybody to be a bigger cheerleader for community planning groups than me uh, because they often need defense. Uh, there's a lot of criticism about planning groups, there's a lot of criticism about planning group members, some of which is deserved. Uh, but they really do good stuff. Um, and uh, we'll talk more about it, but uh, that's really the reason I got involved. Thanks, Joe. I'm David Alvarez, and I'm a council member from City San Diego. I represent the 8th Council District, which you are in today. Welcome. Um, I've been a council member for two and a half years, a little over that, December of 2010 is when I was sworn in. And uh, I got involved in politics really through uh, activism, organizing in the community, uh, making sure that the community is in its best uh, shape possible, and um, that's why I ran for office because I wanted to make sure that 
an immigrants that I grew up and live in and um, that I came to represent as a result of being elected um, weren't being neglected by city power structure because I really believe that they were prior to, to um, my election. So um, I'm a big supporter of planning groups uh, and believe in what they uh, have to offer. Um, even though I know District 8, which is the district I represent incredibly well, I've walked every single street and I drive through it all the time. Um, the, the people who are on planning groups know the day to day what's happening on individual streets that I know. And so I respect their opinion um, and I believe that it's very, very important to listen to our planning groups. And, um, and so I'll just keep it at that. I, I appreciate you coming today to learn a little bit more about what planning is and how planning works. And I'm always thrilled to see new faces, whether it's on a planning group, a city board or commission, or at a city council meeting, to be honest, because we usually get the same faces. So it's really nice to see new faces today, and I hope it's not the last time that you get involved and you engage more civically. Okay, so what does the city council do Well, um, the connection to community planning groups, neighborhood representation, and investment, right? Um, well, the, the, the purpose of the community planning groups is supposed to represent the overall, um, in, the overall impacts that are happening in the community. And uh, in order for them to represent that, the voices have to be there to, um, to share what's happening in your block and, and really bring the, the issues to their attention. And they're supposed to react to that. Um, I'm, I'm also part of the Southeastern Planning Group as well, um, a member of it. Uh, what, what I normally see that disconnect is that there aren't many residents that come to these meetings. So we don't get to hear a lot from, from the different blocks. Really what we get to hear is what the members feel that are some of the issues, and they tend to be a little bit more about themselves, not about what we're supposed to represent. So it's, it's really critical to hear those voices um, in, in order for them to be accountable to what they're supposed to be representing. Um, and some of it is about infrastructure. Some of it is about what currently is happening, what is missing in your community, in your block, whether it be a sidewalk, whether it be lighting, whether it be whatever it is, it's important to bring that. And we're supposed to be doing the connection as the capital improvements projects are being created. Well, that's supposed to reflect that. Um, so that's how everything's linked. The quality of life really impacts the outside environment that we all live in. And, and in order for us to be responsive, in order for us, um, for council member David Alvarez to be responsive, we need to hear that information, so it's critical. Uh, the other thing I'll add, uh, this might sound contradictory from what I said before, uh, the good thing about community planning groups is that they are a formally recognized structure within the city of San Diego. As Mr. Fulton uh, mentioned, you know, San Diego was very innovative in establishing those very uh, long time ago. And so there, in terms of representing the community through an official voice, the city of San Diego contacts the planning groups uh, on a monthly basis with specific questions that they want answered that represents the voice of the community. We'll talk a little later when they are the voice. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that it's important for all stakeholders to get involved and have all kinds of voices. And you need to find an organization that fits your personality, your schedule. And so they're not the only voice. They're the official voice. They are what was reported. They are the message that is sent to the planning commission, and to the city council, and to the mayor's office. But there are other ways to communicate, uh, including directly with your, your uh, elected council uh, member. Uh, but they are a structured voice. And since 2007, uh, they've been given very formal rules about how to operate. Uh, they have to post their agendas, know what's going to be talked about. Other organizations can kind of do what they want, when they want, how they want. So you, they're very loose in that regards. And often they attract a certain kind of individual. 
pine groups are a little more broad based, so they're intended to be a little more broad based. Uh, and so again, the key thing is they're officially recognized by the city to provide a voice for the community, and therefore they're a powerful tool to communicate. I'll just add briefly that planning groups usually are the first place where you find out about something happening in your group that you might or might not like. And so um, they're critical because it's sort of a place, a gathering place of neighbors who start to talk about something going on and um, it might not be planning related, but it might be important for people to share that with their elected representatives. And so that's the reason why I find them so valuable. We're not developing something, there's not something on the agenda for every planning group, every meeting that's in development. Um, it could be you know, very light agenda, but there's other, other discussions occurring or at least for me, what I appreciate the most coming from uh, neighborhoods that don't have a lot of organizations that provide input, um, it's a place to go and gather input. And that's really critical for me as I make decisions going forward. So I think we just answered the next question. Yeah. Which is why should someone get involved in the community planning group? Um, so why don't we move on to what what should someone expect when they come to their community planning uh, group meetings? And how can someone be successful? And what are some of the reasons people don't come or stop attending? What can we do better? <laughs> uh, these are really good questions. Uh, and they can be tough, uh, tough to answer. Uh, the interesting thing about community planning groups is that the kind of an informal process uh, that yet has a lot of rules about how they operate. Uh, the good thing about in terms of coming to a community planning group is that you know what is going to be on the agenda before you show up. So you can make a decision about whether to come. Since 2007, uh, when the city attorney decided that planning groups needed to follow the California Brown Act, we have to post our agendas 72 hours in advance, at least 72 hours in advance, in a location near where the meeting is actually being held, usually outside the library or something like that. And you actually list about not only the agenda item, but what you're going to be talking about. So that is, as Council Member Elder, is it kind of give you that heads up of what's going to be talked about. So you can look at it and see if it's something of interest and uh, whether to attend that particular meeting. Uh, the planning group has a certain uh, obligation to hear a lot of things that the city spends. So when the city says we want input on a development, kind of development project or a public infrastructure project, the planning group is obligated. So as, as Council Member Oliver has said, that is a great place to learn about things right firsthand. The, media, the meetings, to be honest, can be somewhat tedious because they're very formally run. They have to be very formally run. Uh, if you come into a meeting because you've got a hot issue that you're really mad about and you want to talk about it, the chair is probably going to say, it's not on tonight's agenda, we can't talk about it. We'll give you two or three minutes to outline what your issue is, and maybe we'll take it up next month. That can be frustrating to people. People may have, I want to do it now, if you don't do it now, then I'm not coming back ever again. So you have to have the patience to say there's a formal process, you only meet once a month, so you've got to work with the nation for the next 30 days. Uh, and you're going to hear a lot of issues on that night that may not affect you very much. And you may say, why am I here? But your voice is important, even if it doesn't affect you directly. Uh, Councilman Rowley has mentioned that there are sometimes big policy issues. The hardest thing about planning group process is they often talk about big picture items. And you're saying to yourself, why do I want to care about that? You need to care about that. You need to understand. You need to listen to be part of that conversation because eventually that policy will then be implemented and could affect what happens next door to you. So that's why you need to be part of that. And that's the hardest thing for people to understand and have the patience to deal with. Um, the, the reason people get frustrated is kind of, I kind of went through that. There's talk about issues that they don't seem very important, it seems very boring. The other reason is that people get intimidated. There's a special language to community planning groups, there's a special language to land use issues, to development projects, to uh, new city ordinances. 
and people feel uncomfortable. My encouragement to you is bear with you, bear with that. Because you will learn. Just sitting there and listening, you will learn. I knew a lot of stuff coming in when I started because of my background and training. But I learned a lot just by sitting there and listening. Planning groups work best when we have a few people that have a lot of technical expertise, when we have people that have been there a long time and know the history of their community, and then we have new voices with new energy and new passion, because we need that to advance the conversation. So that's why it's also important, and I'm excited about the number of people that are showing up here. Uh, again, in 2000s, one of the reasons that people stopped going is that the same people got elected to the planning groups over and over and over again. New people could not break in. In 2007, we went through a big change, and now the planning groups all have term limits. Term limits in most of them are, can be as short as six years, can be as long as eight years. But there is going to eventually be a turnover, so we want new people ready. Another reason that you want to participate is that most planning groups have a threshold about getting elected. Some planning groups say you have to go to at least one meeting before you can be elected. Some planning groups, like mine, you have to go to three meetings in a year before you can be elected. They want to make sure that you're really engaged, not showing up for one issue. But it really is important to get that experience. And, and again, I can't emphasize that enough. To go with, bear with the new lingo, the new people that are there. Uh, I'm probably going off base, you can stop the trip. But one of the other reasons people don't get involved is there's often very strong personalities that you don't mix well with, that dominate. That's tough part. That's one of the reasons people say, I'm not going to go to the planning groups, but I'm going to find another organization that's more comfortable with. It's hard for me to sit here bear with that and try to break through, but eventually those people get tired and they move on, or better voices that people will listen to will get involved. So kind of ramble there, I hope we kind of Pick up a few points. Uh, so, why do you like to see change about community planning groups or community planning? And um, do you have a vision for the future regarding increased transparency and community power in decision making? And also, how do you have a, an idea of how we can incorporate more equity into the current system? Um, so, um, what, what's the, so I started getting involved in the Southeastern Planning Group because I care about this community quite a bit. And uh, one of the things that I started seeing is that a lot of the, the folks that represent, that have been there as stakeholders, as representatives of the committee, have been there since the beginning of, of the makeup of this planning group. And, and it continues to be like that. We were able to get new people, and some of them have dropped. But um, I'm, I'm kind of like a minority there. Um, so I definitely invite those that really care about the southeastern area, or about any area, because we really get involved. It's, it's, it's really important. Um, so I, I want to see new faces. Um, I want to see representation that's not about your own personal belief, but really uh, see people represent the overall responsibility, which is look beyond what you think um, and represent those that have really need representation. One of the things that um, I see lacking is just that there's no true accountability to the planning groups. Um, so I want to see them get better, uh, more support from the from the city of San Diego. Um, what that looks like, I, I, I don't know exactly. And then the, 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 the most important one that, that I see missing is um, the, 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 the work that I do are mainly in, in areas that happen to be monolingual in a different language. Well, we don't have translation in these meetings, and there is a support to, to provide translation. So I see that as a huge gap. And in order to incorporate other people, um, because they matter, they need to understand what's happening. So providing translation is critical into these meetings. So I definitely want to see that in the future. Um, I think there should be term limits, but not allow you to like take a year and then come back, which is what happens. Um, we need to relook at that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I see right now. Uh, everything she said. Uh, once upon a time when, when we were flushed with money, uh, 
city sent uh, community planners out to every single meeting, uh, every single planning group, uh, and we lost that. We got away from that. During a uh, planning update, you, the community planners are out there, uh, but we really should have that specific uh, city staff support every month. Because questions come up, and they, we need somebody who's objective there to give answers and help that planning group. Uh, the, um, I think the term limits is an issue that I would like to see a little bit shorter as well. And exactly what George had said, that once you're off, you're off for a while. Uh, because that gives people more confidence to get fresh faces in there. Uh, I would also like to uh, uh, see more civility in our planning groups. Uh, often the people that get involved get on there because they have a specific agenda. They're often very strong-willed. Uh, and I would like to see some training more about how we work together and come to a common interest so, instead of relentlessly fighting for your particular issue. Uh, because it hurts the community. They don't, it doesn't allow them to advance. It doesn't allow them to build a consensus on things that, that we need to decide and then move forward. Uh, uh, I think we also need